1984 is a truly terrifying novel by George Orwell, a 20th century master of political commentary via speculative fiction. In the not-too-distant future year, relative to the book's publication of 1984, the world is dominated by three perpetually warring superstates, Eurasia, East Asia, and Oceania. Oceania operates under the principles of Ingsoc, English socialism, and is governed with an iron fist by the party, which enforces total conformity and obedience with the enigmatic Big Brother as its figurehead. In the oceanic territory of Airstrip 1, formerly England or Britain, Winston Smith is a lowly government employee in the Ministry of Truth, which handles propaganda and correcting records, but he secretly hates the party and yearns for liberty. Winston begins a passionate relationship with a promiscuous younger woman named Julia and is pulled into a shadowy resistance organization supposedly run by enemy of the people Emmanuel Goldstein. 1984 is riveting for its world-building, lucid character insights and tone, which deftly blends hope with abject desolation. Oceania is a place of constant deprivation, surveillance and logical paradoxes. Despite the party ceaselessly reporting utopian living standards and bountiful overproduction of goods, life is cold, hungry, monotonous, and passionless, except when the people are whipped up into reverence for Big Brother or hatred toward the enemy in the two minutes hate. Oceania is a little like the cave in Plato's famous allegory. Winston knows in his underfed bones that there was a time long ago when life was free and better, but he has difficulty understanding this feeling on a concrete level because his current party life has no point of comparison, beyond indistinct childhood memories. Winston isn't particularly smart, unlike his colleague Syme, whose zealous brilliance with Newspeak vocabulary eventually leads to his elimination, but at least Winston listens to his heart, an inclination being stamped out by the party, in realizing his oppression. Winston resists the mental mechanisms used by the party to perpetuate its tyranny, but more on that later. In Oceania, any independent or dissenting thought is prohibited as thought crime, or crime think in Newspeak, and punished by the ruthless, all-seeing thought police from the Ministry of Love. Privacy hardly exists, as every party location, including party members' homes, has blaring telescreens watching you at every moment, and just a gesture, unconscious expression, or something muttered in your sleep could incite suspicion. Something as simple as keeping a diary gives Winston, and us, an almost perverse thrill, as he is exercising an otherwise impossible act of freedom. Once he meets Julia, it is gratifying then to see him take an almost unknown pleasure in Julia's loving company, rent a seemingly private flat above an old antique shop, grow healthier, and indulge in black market good food and coffee. As the party seeks to suppress all feeling, connection, and camaraderie other than obedience to Big Brother, this simple relationship is, in itself, an act of defiance against their overlords. But this uplifting section of the novel is tinged with a palpable resignation. They know that the Thought Police will eventually catch, torture, and kill them. Escape is impossible, and all they can do is enjoy every moment they have together before the axe falls. With the insidious surveillance established earlier, this theme of inevitable demise makes Winston and Julia's relationship extremely tense, and they are somewhat heroic for continuing on regardless. Their capture and capitulation at the hands of the Thought Police is no less mortifying, however. Now, some discussion of Newspeak, the official language of Oceania, is in order. As an instrument of totalitarianism, Newspeak is a work of horrific genius and efficiency. By drastically reducing the quantity and meaning of words, the potential for rebellion is also greatly diminished. Subversive thoughts are far less likely, as there no longer exists the words to articulate or understand them. Therefore, the party controls its citizens' very thoughts, with a reach and magnitude unmatched by even the worst real dictatorships through the language it allows them to speak. Another integral element of Ingsoc and the party's control is doublethink. Doublethink is the party practice of holding two contradictory ideas in one's head and completely believing both of them as true. It involves a willful and deliberate disregarding of any objective reality and accepting as inviolate truth the reality put forth by the party. O'Brien, an inner party member, is a major secondary character in the novel. Through covert glances, and eventually a meeting at his estate, he appears to be like Winston, a secret rebel opposed to Big Brother. 
but in the novel's grueling final act, O'Brien is revealed as a loyal party member who had trapped Winston using a false sense of security and fake Brotherhood resistance material, and he personally oversees Winston's rehabilitation. O'Brien's true self delivers an added shock by subverting a long-held assumption about party adherence. It seems as if a certain saving stupidity is a survival advantage in the party. The portly, dim-witted Parsons, one of Winston's colleagues at the Ministry of Truth, would appear to thrive in Oceania as he merrily supports the party and is too stupid to realize all the glaring contradictions. But O'Brien is astonishingly intelligent and has been taken in by Ingsoc and Doublethink far more than any other character in the novel. He treats Winston with a chilling combination of wisdom, disarming warmth, and conditioning cruelty. O'Brien has mastered Doublethink as only an extremely logical, analytical person can. He has internalized party doctrine so deeply that he will, without hesitation or even conscious recognition, disavow his own memories if the party wills it. O'Brien helped develop the book, which presents itself as the Brotherhood's Manifesto of Principles and contains lucid rebuffs of party ideology. This means that O'Brien knows of pre-party history, the party's despotic practices, the underlying reasons for the war, and past party mistakes, but at the same time he unquestioningly believes the party's contradictory image as eternal and infallible. It's a mechanical, almost inhuman mode of thought, knowing a given fact as true, but completely believing in the untrue, party-mandated opposite. On some level, O'Brien, the main antagonist, is the biggest victim in the novel, as his mind is consumed by Ingsoc. Plenty of totalitarian states have cults of personality, in which the leader is revered like a king or god. These include Hitler's Germany, Stalin's Russia, Mao's China, Castro's Cuba, and in today's world, Lukashenko's Belarus, Kim Jong-un's North Korea, or Hubbard's Scientology. Totalitarian states hunt down and punish any dissenting thought or action, and utilize brutal, far-reaching police such as the Cheka under Lenin, the KGB in the Soviet Union, and East Germany's Stasi force. Totalitarian states tell frequent lies and indoctrinate their people with propaganda and have attempted social engineering. Communist China carried out extensive thought reform programs in the early 50s, and the Soviet Union promoted the ideal of a joyfully patriotic, selflessly collectivist Soviet man. Such regimes exert tight, harsh control over their people. But rebellion still takes place. Brave malcontents find a way to leave the country and find asylum in freer nations. Oppressed people exchange hope and ideas in underground organizations, circulate forbidden media and literature, or, in the case of the Solidarity Movement in Communist Poland, 1980 and 1989, to give an example, may even stand against the tyrants in charge. If your thoughts are still your own, then the regime has not truly conquered you. But in Oceania, rebellion is becoming increasingly impossible, and not just because of the thought police and omnipresent surveillance. The party's inventions of Newspeak and Doublethink are horrifically effective systems for subjugating the people's very thoughts and enslaving their minds to the party line. Independent or even complex thought is being broken down. Though I'm a little dubious as to how such a regime could form in the first place, 1984 depicts one of the most frightening dystopias ever conceived. 1984 is a moving, highly suspenseful novel with a disturbingly thorough depiction of a dystopian regime. Thanks for watching. Cheers.